Hi there, welcome back to Witchfinders Gaming Vault. This is the first video I've done in this series for a couple of months. And as I mentioned in my video on the 1st of January, I'm going to be making a couple of changes to the format of this series. The first thing, as I mentioned in that video, is I'm changing the way I'm picking the game randomly at the end of each video. And the other change, as you can see here, is I'm no longer going to be introducing the videos by looking at the camera myself. Instead, I'm going to go straight to the packaging review. As you can see, the first game I'm going to be looking at is Mega Nova the Weapon for the Commodore 64. And I'm still going to be doing the fact file for the games, so let's take a look at that now. And Mega Nova the Weapon was released in 1988 in European territories. It was published by Alternative Software and developed by Spanish programmers Dynamic. The price I paid for the game some years ago was £1.25 and the current going rate for the game on eBay is unknown. There hasn't been any copies sold recently but I have sold a copy myself a few years ago for £3 to £4 so I don't think it's got any particular value. Let's take a closer look at the packaging then as I've always done and will continue to do and as you can see it's a single cassette budget release with the alternative software logo in the top left corner and the Mega Nova title right sort of sideways on on the packaging so let's have a look at it that way around and you can see there's a pretty generic sort of space shoot 'em up type artwork on there as well. This is part of alternative software's 299 range so a premium budget title if you like and there's the spine and it just says the Megan over the weapon on it again and on the back cover we've got again the logo for the game and a number of screenshots it does say they may be from a different version and I suspect these are probably the Amstrad screenshots because they don't look very Commodore-y in terms of the colours uh, no description of what the game's about there just four big screenshots but overall the outside of the packaging is pretty nice quick look at the cassette shows a pretty nice label with the name of the game on it unsurprisingly although Mega Nova has been separated into two words on this uh, it says it's recorded both sides and there's not really much more to say about it it's pretty nicely done with the alternative software logo in the top left as well so certainly not generic like a lot of the budget games would be with just a sort of white label you can see it also says 299 in the background there to denote the 299 price point so let's move on to the instructions and we've got the loading instructions which I'm not going to go into because they're pretty generic for all Commodore 64 games. It's then got the overview of the game that says Philippus Sunset, an interstellar mega pilot from the Terra One Confederation, has borrowed, in inverted commas, the Sprocket system, stealing it from the dreadful Drohar Empire. Rough times are looming. Philippus has to get back to his bait with the Sprocket system in tip top condition. It then goes on to give an overview of the different systems that you're going to go through, uh, which I'm not going to go over. It's got FX triple load, it says here, so I'm not sure if this is a multi load. It says the first load, phase one, you fight on the surface of Mega Nova against the troops of the Drohar Empire until you reach an underground entrance. Phase two, you must get past the columns of Shan Mulok. The only way to escape them is by destroying the gates that block your access to the labyrinth of. Otnirable, I'm not sure how that says but let's move on uh, and then it goes on to say the second load has got phases 3 and 4 which I'm not going to go into and the third load has got phase 5 will you be able to escape from Terra 1 and succeed in your mission may good fortune be with you it then gives you an overview of the enemies a vast array of baddies are waiting for you they're all elite pilots so be careful and then it moves on to tell you your powers which are power ups basically objects that float in space which would be useful if you pick them up we've got speed power, shooting power shield power and shooting power 2 and also life power Oop. and at the bottom there it says the points two ways you can earn points by completing a phase and by killing enemies when you start out you have five lives and any more yeah there's a little bit more too that's the controls keyboard controls there of course it'll support a joystick as well and finally the credits for the company so there you go pretty comprehensive packaging for a budget game it's also got the instructions in I think Italian and German possibly Spanish or French I'm not sure I'm not going to read them let's get on and load the game up the game's loading up then and we've got a loading screen which is pretty nicely drawn of the artist name in the bottom right hand corner there it seems to be R Herrero and well it's nicely done but I'm not really sure why it's got the Statue of Liberty in the background there's also no name for the game so I do wonder if this bit of artwork was done independently of the game and was just added because it was a nice bit of spacey sort of artwork well there you go the game is loading up although the loading bar seems to have disappeared around the sides so hopefully it's still loading oh there we go it's going now and uh, yeah we'll see what the game's like in due course Okay, so after an absolute age, it's taken honestly 10 minutes to load this game. Here's the title screen, it says Mega Nova on it, you've got a couple of options, you can basically just choose keyboard or joystick control, it's got the credits at the bottom there, programmed by Luis Mariano Garcia, 
and graphics by Roberto Herrera who also did that title screen you can see the copyright there dynamic software and we've got some kind of music in the background doesn't sound too bad the initial music when it first sort of started the title screen up was pretty horrible it wasn't really music it was just a load of like hissing noise but once it gets into the actual tune it sounds okay So reasonable presentation so far, let's take a look at the game. Obviously I'm going to use the, uh, oh, oh, there goes a life straight away. Uh, I'm going to use the joystick, not the keyboard controls. So it's a horizontally scrolling shooter and we've got some enemies coming from the back. Your ship moves quite slowly and I've lost another life. And as you can see, when you lose a life, you go back to the start. Oh, oh God almighty. Um, yeah, so things approach you from behind and uh, fire at you so you've got to be in the right place when stuff comes on the screen oh and there I, I thought I'd shot that but there goes another life this is going to be one of those where you've got to learn the patterns of the enemies I, I think also got some asteroids flying down at you no oh god oh, you've really got to yeah okay so this is one of those games where you've got to uh, understand the patterns of the enemies and position your ship in just the right place to stop them hitting you so this is going to take a few attempts to get into graphics seem pretty nice your main ships a bit R type looking I guess you would say uh, and uh, the enemy ships are big and well animated we've got some landscapes as well okay oh, I managed to avoid that that time by ducking down oh that's a power up I think I'm moving a bit faster now oh, <laughs> oh God, I flew straight into that one oh dear yeah, uh, dynamic, well known for very, very hard games, uh, and this one looks to be no different. Uh, Freddy Hardest was one of those which I have played in in a fairly recent oh god, fairly recent video, and uh, I think Army Moves was one of theirs as well, which is known to be really difficult. Oh, so yeah, the stuff approaching you from behind uh, is very annoying. Uh, and your ship doesn't move that fast so it's hot, hard to react to stuff coming on the screen obviously the patterns of things coming on the screen are the same every time so you, there is a spot to position oh dear uh, yeah okay uh, I might have a few games of this uh, oh cool, blimey yeah I think what I'll do is I'll have a couple of goes of it without recording um, and see if I can make a bit more progress to show some of the later stages of at least the first stage but so far it's looking to be very very difficult okay so I've been playing this game now about 10 times probably and I've still not got anywhere in it really what we've got here is an incredibly strict memory test where if you put your ship in slightly the wrong position at any point during the level then you die and you go back to the start uh, it's, it's incredibly infuriating but let's give it a go see how far I can get so yeah, as I say, you've got to position your ship in exactly the right place almost for every wave of enemies that comes past. And if you miss an enemy, or you miss time, you're positioning slightly, then <laughs> yeah, you die. Um, so it, it's really hard, really hard and really annoying. So there's this wave here, you have to duck past one of them. Oh, I didn't say go see. Uh, I needed to stay a little bit higher up the screen, otherwise I got hit by that meteor flying down. And the, the whole... Uh, level is just like that so as I say I've, I've not got there you go see I didn't dip, duck down far enough early enough because I've avoided the previous wave of enemies and one comes flying in from the back and hits you it's just ridiculously difficult and frustrating uh, so I won't be playing it for long uh, I'll give it a, oh, again see just not a pixel not low enough there and I die and it's back to the start Oh dear, why, why do people design games like this? They at least make the first sort of three or four waves of enemies easy to get past so you can make a bit of progress into the game. Um, it does get, I would say it gets a bit easier once you've got speed, but it doesn't really. Um, it just, so, okay. There's another power up, so I've got a, some kind of weapon. Oh, and you see, I don't know where to go there because they're all just swooping in on me. Uh, and I've run out of screen to fly into so you must have to be in the right place for them to fly past you and then get uh, sort of behind them 
uh, oh, I, I forgot him. Like literally every step, if you forget or you position yourself in the wrong place, uh, then it's death basically. Uh, graphically nice as I mentioned, uh, presentation's nice, sound effects pretty average to be honest. Oh, see again you need to be down low on the, the screen at that point for those two. Oh god, I'm, not, I'm just getting worse and worse the more I play it. Uh, what an infuriating game. I'll give it a couple more goes probably uh, just just to have some sort of content to this video but honestly it's awful um, just just the the memory you've got to have to, to get through each stage and like I say just any slight diversion or deviation from the correct way of getting trying to get through it like that uh, didn't hit the enemy so it flew into me um, yeah it's just insanely difficult and n absolutely no fun uh, I think it's got like five or six levels. I've seen a playthrough of it. This oh, this is going to get me. Yeah, see, because I didn't duck down low enough for them to fly over me, and you just don't move fast enough to avoid them. Uh, yeah, it's just infuriating. Got lucky there. Oh, oh, oh god it's so annoying oh go on one more one more go just to see if I can make any further progress but uh, it's just oh, <laughs> it's just such an annoying thing because you might finally work out to get past one wave of enemies and then the next wave just kills you and you're back to the start so each time you're having to play through the same tedious waves of enemies to, to, oh again just literally pixels difference between success and failure it's just so irritating Ugh. it's not even like shooting the enemies that helps you make progress You've, it's the memory side of it that's, that's what gets you through it. it it's almost oh come on it's almost irrelevant whether you whether you shoot the enemies or not you just have to remember how to avoid them Ugh. it's just ridiculously difficult and as a result very boring as well it's just tiresome to have to go through this stuff over and over again okay. oh <laughs> flew into the goddamn asteroid again oh yeah it's so annoying you're lucky I'm not swearing more than I just did um, for how annoying this game is it's really just infuriating and it's a shame because with a, a bit more balance to the difficulty it looks like it's a pr oh no I haven't got those things swooping on me go on one more go just uh, for sheer bloody mindedness one more go uh, yeah it's a shame because it's obviously um, the scrolling's nice the graphics are nice sound effects are nothing to write home about but why make it so difficult right from the start at least give you a stage that's relatively easy to get into the game to let you feel like you're making some progress but oh flew into the bloody ass it's like oh every time just trying to get into the right position you need to be at the back of the screen when those asteroids appear to avoid them but it's so hard to remember all the, this sequence of things that you have to do oh, it's infuriating it really is Oh, just remember that in time. So up to the front here, and then right to the back of the screen. Okay, that's avoided those things. Oh, these things. Oh yeah, I've got to be down in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen when they come past. Let's see if I can remember that. But there's just, it, honestly, for a person my age, remembering all these sequence of things is just too much. And it's not reactions don't help you because if you're just in the wrong place by a matter of pixels then uh, it's, you've got no chance so just an incredibly annoying game get that and then down this bottom side here yeah okay this is the furthest I've got now I don't know what's coming next no I, I don't even know what I crashed into then scenery maybe I'm not sure oh yeah two lives left and then this is all over I'm not going to get out of the way. Oh, I did just get out of the way in time. Oh, dear. Let's 
So if you're persistent enough, you can probably learn how to get through this. But why would you want to? It's just so annoying. Oh no. There's just so many better shooters to... There we go, that's a good way to end it with me completely forgetting the beginning bit of the thing. So that's enough of this. What a terrible game, really. It's just way too difficult. So I won't be keeping that one. That'll be going on the for sale pile for definite. Very short video to restart this Witchfinders Gaming Vault series. Uh, so all that remains then... Uh, I suppose I should ask you what you think about it. Let me know in the comments if you've got any thoughts about this really frustrating game. And the only thing that remains is to pick the game for next time which I'm going to do right now by spinning the wheel of names. And the game that's come out is Subterranea for the Sega Mega Drive. So that's what I'll be playing next time around. Thanks very much for watching this very short video. If you've got any thoughts about it, like I say, let me know in the video comments. And I'll be back with another video very soon. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.